Hi everyone, welcome to the GCSE Miles Revision Countdown and there's 99 days to go. And in this GCSE Foundation video, we're gonna focus on the topic of rounding. So today we're gonna to focus on rounding. I've got the Code Miles Revision card on rounding. So if you need any help on rounding, obviously you can look in your revision cards and on the foundation deck, it's card number 39. But in this video, I'm gonna go through it in a bit more detail now. So I'm just about to begin going through rounding. So remember, I'm gonna go through the topic of rounding. I'll then give you some questions to try yourself. And then I'll give you links in the description below on the practice questions on rounding. And then you can try those if you want a bit more practice on rounding as well. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, let's look at our topic today. So our topic today is rounding. So rounding. So here's the Corp Maps revision card. And I'm going to go through some rounding by looking at this revision card to begin with. So here we've got some questions. We've got round 235 to the nearest 100. And we need to decide if 235 is closer to 200 or 300. Now just remember, if it's exactly in the middle, so if it was 250, what we do is we round up so it would be 300. But let's have a look at this, 235. So let's look, consider our number line. If we had 200 and 300, in the middle would be 250 and 235 would be down there somewhere. So that means that 235 to the nearest 100 would be 200. So the answer would be 200. Okay, let's look at our next question. We've been asked to round 7,680 to the nearest 1,000. So because it's 7,680, it's in between 7,000 and 8,000. And in the middle would be 7,500. So in the middle would be 7,500. So 7,680 would be up there somewhere. So that means that 7,680 is closer to 8,000 than it is to 7,000. So the answer would be 8,000. And that's it. Now, one thing to point out here, if we were asked to round 235 to the nearest 100, I usually just consider is it closer to 200 or 300. But here, if we look at it, it's 235. We want to round to the nearest 100. So we look at the tens column. If the digit in the tens column is a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4, we round down. So we round down to 200. If it's a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, or a 9, we round up. So we round up to 300. So that's another way to consider. And likewise, in this question, because it was 7,680, we wanted to round to the nearest 1,000. So we look at the hundreds, it's a six, so we round up, so it'd be 8,000, okay? Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've been asked to round 5.18 to one decimal place. So if we're rounding 5.18 to one decimal place, well, that's going to be in between 5.1 or 5.2. So that means that to one decimal place, our answer would either be 5.1 or 5.2. Now, in the middle would be 5.15. That's in the middle of 5.1 and 5.2. And 5.18 would be closer to 5.2 than it would be to 5.1. So 5.18 to one decimal place would be 5.2. And again, if you wanted to, if you wanted to round this to one decimal place, you could look at the second decimal place, which is an eight, and that means you round up, so the answer would be 5.2. Okay, so we've looked at rounding. Let's have a look at a typical question now. So here's a typical question, and feel free again to pause the video and to try this question yourself and see if you can do it, and then um, feel free to press play whenever you've tried it. Okay, so the question says a plane ticket costs £384, and we've been asked to round this amount to the nearest 10. So we're rounding this to the nearest 10, so that means that we want to round to the nearest multiple of 10. So, for instance, in this case, this would be in between 380 or 390. So you have to decide if 384 is closer to 380 or 390. And again, remember, if it's exactly in the middle, we round up. So here's 384, so it's going to be closer to 380 than it is to 390. So the answer would be £380. And again, if you wanted to, if you're rounding to the nearest 10, you could look at the units of the ones column here. It's a four, so we round down to 380. And that's it. Okay, so we've looked at rounding to the nearest 10, 100, 1000 and decimal places. Now let's look at rounding to significant figures. So here we've got some numbers and we're going to round these to one significant figure. So being able to round to one significant figure and two significant figures and so on is quite useful. And particularly if you're estimating, rounding to one significant figure is really useful. Okay, so we've got 394. We want to round that so it's one digit followed by zero. So in this case, our choice would either be 300 or 400. Now, because it's 394, that's much closer to 400 than it is to 300. So rounded to one significant figure would be 400. So that means that 394 rounded to one significant figure would be 400. And if you were doing an estimation question, you had 394, you may want to round it to 400 if you're doing a question like that. Okay, our next number is 1,273. So we want to round this number to one significant figure. Again, that means one digit followed by zeros. So in this case, we'd either choose 1,000 or 2,000. Now, 1,273 is much closer to 1,000 than it is to 2,000. So the answer would be 1,000. And that's it. Okay, our next question. Our next question is around 7,961 to the one significant figure. So again, we want one digit followed by zeros. So this is in between 7,000 and 8,000. So in this case, because it's 7,961, we're going to round up to 8,000. So it would be 8,000. It's much closer to 8,000 than it is to 7,000. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question is to round 0.618 to one significant figure. Then in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to round it so it's 0. Point something. So it's either going to be 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7. Now, 0.618 is much closer to 0.6 than it is to 0.7, so rounding this to one significant figure would be 0.6, and that's it. Okay, and our next one is 20.501, and we want to round that to one significant figure. So again, we want one digit here, followed by zero, so here it's either going to be 20 or 30, and 20.501 is much closer to 20 than it is to 30, so rounding this to one significant figure would be 20. So that's how you round numbers to one significant figure. Let's have a look at one ourselves now. So we've been asked around 46,781 to one significant figure, and again, feel free to pause the video and to try this question now yourself, and whenever you've got an answer, press play. Okay, so we've been asked to round this to one significant figure, so that means one digit followed by zeros. So we've got 46,781, so our choices would be 40,000 or 50,000. And this is much closer to 50,000 than it is to 40,000, because it's uh, beyond the middle point, it's beyond the middle point, it's beyond 45,000. So that means it's closer to 50,000 than it is to 40,000, so our answer would be 50,000. So rounding this to one significant figure would be 50,000. Okay, so we've looked at rounding numbers. We've looked at rounding numbers to significant figures. Now let's look at how to find the lowest possible value and the greatest possible number whenever you've been given a number that's already been rounded. So we've got the population of Wales is 12,000 to the nearest thousand. So the population of Wales have been rounded to the nearest thousand. So it's been rounded to give us 12,000. And we've been asked, what's the lowest possible population of Wales? So that means the population of Wales has been rounded and then we've got 12,000. So it means it could have been a number smaller than 12,000. It could have perhaps been a number such as 11,999. If you rounded that to the nearest thousand, it'd be 12,000. It could have been even lower. It could have been 11,800. If we rounded 11,800 to the nearest thousand, it would be 12,000. It could be even lower. It could be 11,600. That would round to 12,000 to the nearest thousand. It could actually be 11,500, because remember, if it's in the middle of 11,000 and 12,000, we always round up. So that means 11,500 would round to 12,000 to the nearest thousand. But it couldn't be 11,499. If we had 11,499, that would round down to 11,000 rather than up to 12,000. So it couldn't be 11,499, but it could be 11,500. So the lowest possible population of Wales would be 11,500. That's the smallest number that would round up to 12,000 because there were number beneath that. And because this is people, it's, it's got to be a whole number. It can't be decimal numbers. 11,499 would round down to 11,000 rather than up to 12,000. Okay, so the next question says, what's the highest possible population of Wales? So we could have had 12,001. If we had that and we rounded that to the nearest thousand, it would be 12,000. We could have 12,400. If we rounded that to the nearest thousand, that's closer to 12,000 than it is to 13,000. It could be 12,480, that would round to 12,000 rather than up to 13,000. It could actually even be 12,499, that would round to 12,000 rather than up to 13,000. But it couldn't be 12,500, because if we had 12,500, that would round up to 13,000. So that means that the population of Wales couldn't be 12,500, because we've rounded that. Remember, if it's in the middle, we round up, so it couldn't be that. So the highest possible population of Wales would be 12,499. That's the highest possible population of Wales. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at a question now. And feel free to try this one yourself. Press pause and to try this question yourself. And whenever you're ready, press play. And then I'll go through the answer. Okay, so the question says, a farmer says she's got 2,500 sheep to the nearest 100. So she's rounded her sheep and the number of sheep. And the question says, what is the greatest possible number of sheep that she has? So let's consider this, 2,500. Well, she could have had a number greater than 2,500. And we've been asked to find what's the greatest possible number that she could have had. So she could have had 2,501. That would round to 2,500. She could have had 2,540. That would round to 2,500. She couldn't have 2,550 because that would round up to 2,600 rather than down to 2,500. So she could have 2,549. That's the greatest possible number of sheep that she could have because that would round down to 2,500, but this would round up. So that means that the greatest possible number of sheep that the farmer could have had would have been 2,549. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through rounding. We've looked at how to round numbers to the nearest 10, 100, 1,000, whole number, decimals, and so on. We've looked at rounding numbers to one significant figure, and so on. And we've also looked at how to find the highest possible number and the lowest possible number if a number has been rounded and we've been given that rounded number. And that's it. So I've put some practice questions in the description below. So if you go to the description below, I've put links to those practice questions. It'd be really useful for you to practice those. And thanks very much.
And that's it. So I hope you found it useful going through the topic of rounding. Remember in the description below, there's the practice questions and also the answers to the practice questions. If you want a bit more practice on rounding, obviously try those questions. They'll be useful for your revision. Remember rounding is a very important topic because whenever you're doing questions, sometimes it'll say round your answer to one or two decimal places, or sometimes you'll just have questions on rounding on their own. So round a number to the nearest thousand and so on. So I hope you found this topic useful. And remember that at three o'clock tomorrow, there'll be 98 days to go and there'll be the next Cold Maths video. So keep an eye out on the YouTube channel for that. And again, if you have found this video useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.